Lori Goodman is a sculptor who explores the world through organic shapes and materials. She's invited us here to her enchanted farm in Humboldt County to show us how she does it. Hi, I'm Katie Texas. Welcome to Studio Space. I feel a kinship to everybody who's ever made paper or who's ever woven a piece of cloth. You know, there's this connection. Hi, Lori Goodman. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming. Would you describe what it is that you do? My medium is paper, so I'm a paper maker. Did you, uh, did you go to school for art? Ultimately, I did. I got a master's in art at Humboldt before they closed the program down. And I went there again because my family was here and I didn't want to commute to faraway places and I didn't want to leave them. So I, um, and I wasn't too interested in teaching. I just wanted the focus. I went to the sculpture department and I said, here's what I want to do. And they said, none of that women's stuff, none of that weaving stuff. No, wait, none of that women's stuff, none of that weaving stuff? They okay. didn't want me to, they didn't want my medium, my fiber medium to be weaving because they knew I was a weaver. Uh, and I said, no, I want it to be in paper. Because that's not fine arts enough. Right. Gotcha. Right. But they changed their tune after a while. They were very supportive and it was a great experience. I've done a lot of traveling to the southern hemispheres mm -hmm. and I find and I'm always fascinated by people who can make do with what's around them because I find it amazing that you can do you can make everything anything that we have and people have made been making it for centuries and centuries mm -hmm. and I just love I love that concept and I love learning about it and then I kind of take that into my own work mm -hmm. How so? Can you give me an example? Well, just by the materials I use and the shapes that I make. And I, I always, I've make a, made a lot of dwellings. I seem to make a lot of dwellings, a lot of um, structures and mm -hmm. places to be. Sometimes they're small and they're just for one person or sometimes they're replicas of something that I think is you know, interesting. Where do you find the materials that you work with? Well, say I buy them. I buy the kozo from somebody who gets it from Japan. So I, I use bamboo. I use a lot of bamboo, and most of the bamboo I get locally. People are always bringing me bamboo. People are happy to get rid of bamboo. Yes, exactly. And I use a lot of round reed that I just buy from a cane supply store. Mm -hmm. And I use a lot of skewers. Was there a moment when you brought the paper up into the third dimension, or was your uh, working with paper always? Mm -hmm. It was always. Even when I was working flat, I would be rolling it or folding it, or I have a hard, or collaging it. I worked with twigs, whatever, you know, clay. What are some of the things that you make paper out of? Mostly I make paper out of something that's called kozo. It's a paper mulberry, and it's the stuff that they call rice paper, but it's not rice paper. And what do you like about it? That it's beautiful, it's fibrous, that it's, it's very earth-like look, looking. You can tell that it's handmade. You can tell that it comes from the earth, and, that it, and it's old. Tell me about the process. So I, um, I actually do a lot of work. I cook it, I cook the kozo strands, and I beat it to a pulp. Okay. And then put it in a vat and then strain it out onto a sieve. sieve. But at that point, you can do a lot of creative things with it. You can paint with it. You can make different colors. You can um, mold it. It's almost like clay. You can do as many things with it as you can do with clay. Because you have the fibers, and then they're going to harden mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. into shape. Mm -hmm. that you could make that shape as thin or as thick exactly. as you like. Exactly, exactly. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Beating it to a pulp, okay. <laughs> uh, it seems like there's got to be a, a feeling. The paper, the beating, is just this rhythm. Mm. So it's different, and I love it. It's just a nice rhythmic thing to do. Making paper is very meditative mm -hmm. and calming. Well, I would love to see how that works. Can we go into your studio? Sure. 
This is the bark? This is the bark. It's called the bast fiber. It's the inner, fi the inner bark of the tree mm -hmm. that grows back very quickly. So you can, you can grow these b trees. I think the maximum is about five feet that they grow. Mm -hmm. Then you harvest them, so it's perfectly great for the environment. So then it gets soaked in water for a long time. Okay. And then it's cooked. Oh yeah, it's much softer. Yeah. So I cook it for about three hours uh -huh. with a soda ash, with a caustic solution. So I guess it's safe to touch. You're touching it. Oh, Ooh, yeah. it's, now it's slimy. Now it's slimy. And now it gets beat into a pulp. OK, so this gets beat. And you see all this splatter on the wall? Uh-huh. That's from this. OK. What is that? OK, so this is called Tororo oil. And it is traditionally made out of hibiscus roots. And what it does, and it's slimy. You could use okra, you could use a lot of things. But this is synthetic that I have purchased. And what it does is, it allows the fibers to float. Without it, you'd get this big clump. This is, this is, um, this, this particular pulp is very thick. Oh, now it's just stuck. Yeah, there it is. And now you do it's called cooching. <laughs> okay. And this just gets laid, it gets cooched right down here. There you go. Okay. Let's go see some of your work that's done put uh, that's put together. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. This is not what I was expecting inside this barn. <laughs> so this, this is just a wrapped box that I made. Mm -hmm. It's wrapped with, it's actually hemp cord that I got from Vietnam, not here. Silk threads, pink and red silk threads, and a little hole. Okay. And the little, <laughs> may I? Sure. And the inside, the. Yeah. I, I like to do this. I make a lot of spaces that you can that are mysterious that you can climb into. Can you climb into that? I certainly can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like how it sits askew. Yeah. And then this is the uh, wrapped in fibers rather than paper, but it's still yeah, all yeah. about those, the fiber, those the, organic fibers. This is fibers. paper, handmade hmm. paper inside. But right, the, I was funny, I was surprised when I finished this because, huh, there's not much paper on that. <laughs> it surprised you. It did. It popped out yeah, at you. Yeah. Is there a secret inside to this one as well? Absolutely. Oh, and look at all the different textures around the outside. So this is one piece of paper with all this stuff in it. Oh, I see. That each, I did each like. Each side is one sheet of paper. Mm, maybe, I don't know. Probably I made a great big sheet and tore it apart. Tore it apart. And then there's the mysterious nest-like innards. Yeah. So we've got the nests, we have huts, we have dwellings. There's definitely that home yeah. theme yeah. that uh, somewhere comfy to be. <laughs> there you go. And I do love my places, I have to say. So what kind of fibers are these here? Same, um, hemp, hemp mm -hmm. cords and kozo. And kozo. One of the things I do love about the kozo, it's so transparent, but it's still extremely strong. It looks very delicate. Yeah, it's, but it's not, yeah. I'd like to talk about these guys. So of, of all the paper you have strung across different kinds of um, forms, these are the ones to me that look most like lanterns or like lighting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they're cheese. <laughs> Where did these come okay. from? So I was in Bhutan, and in Bhutan they make yak cheese, and they make it all around a lot, lot of places, and they string it. And like in Mongolia, they string it um, across the gars and the their yurts and in long strings this way from inside in the, on the ceilings. Mm -hmm. A lot of different places hang yak's cheese to dry. So I was at a kiosk on the road, on a skinny little road like this in Bhutan, and they had a tall, really, really tall, maybe 10 foot, 12 foot tall pole on which were hanging drying yak cheese, or yak cheese that had already dried. So I took a picture, of course, of the yak cheese hanging at the, the little outdoor store and I just posted it to my, both of my daughters and one immediately said, Mom, why do you have a sculpture in Bhutan? And the other one said, oh my God, it looks just like your work. <laughs> and simultaneously, I got these two messages. So as soon as I came home, I started making yak cheese. <laughs> well, they look delicious. Tell me about 
about, is this one piece? Yes. And this one has, is this woven, the, the sides yeah. of this, just crisscross? And what do you harden it with? Nothing. Nothing, it's just the, the paper. Just the paper. And you put, putting that paper wet onto the frame. You know, I don't. I dry nope. the paper and then I use something that's called methocellulose, which a lot of people use. Oh, okay. And I paint it on and the methocellulose gives it a little bit more strength. So bamboo, Reed. hemp, paper, Reed. reeds. Reed. Yeah. Um, it's all very organic. Does that appeal to you, the fact that your art could just dissolve in the rain? because it's not important to me once I finish it. It's just done. The process is what's important. Mm -hmm. you like the and the idea, the problem solving, the whole, yeah. And then if I like it especially, then that's done. I would look at, like some, somebody else to enjoy it, but I'm not very kind to it once it's finished. Thank you so much for showing us around your totally unexpected gallery in a barn. Well, thank you for coming. I see you using a lot of organic shapes and organic materials. I feel like there's uh, a certain amount of chaos in that process, and yet it must be deliberate. I'm going for the chaos. Mm -hmm. I like the chaos. I like the uneasiness of things sometimes. And the, you know, they're not really uneasy there because they're organic. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what nature is. Nature isn't a square box. Although it's symmetrical and it's beautiful, so I, I kind of do emulate nature. And I, um, I, you know, I do a lot of outdoor things. I look at a lot of outdoor stuff. I used to say I backpack and I hike, but I don't backpack much anymore. <laughs> but I still hike a lot. Mm -hmm. And I still can't think of any place I'd rather be than in the mountains or at the beach or, you know. So, um, like a lot of artists, I think that you, when you look at our studios, sometimes I look at pictures of other people's studios, they have all the same stuff I have. They have oak gulls and rocks and shells and, mm. you know, strange leaves. And <laughs> Do you have a project that you're thinking of doing? Anything you're imagining that you haven't gotten started yet? Well, I'm always thinking of my field. I, what I, a few years ago, before COVID, I really had this fantasy of making a sculptor's park. But that got, the logistics of that are overwhelming. <laughs> so what I want to do, I'm going to work small, really tiny, which is new for me. Okay. I've been doing that since during COVID and like just even before COVID, I said I'm going to stay home and work small. Mm. And now I'm thinking again about putting things out into the fields. So I'm not sure what that's going to be. Well, thank you very much, Lori, for inviting us into your lovely home. Well, thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for joining us on Studio Space.